Guys, Deluded Guna, YouTube's and Golo Kante. Now you guys know how much I like grassroots football. I mean, we all done it. How many of you, even these professional footballers, how many of you used to go to the cage, kick ball with your friends till till um from the early hours of the morning until it's time to until the sun's gone and them times there when your mum said be back at four, you come back at six, you know you're gonna get beats. But it was worth it because you kicked football, you did a madness in the cage. Whether you was playing Wembley, ironically I'll get to that later. Whether he's playing a game called Wembley, sixty seconds, Red Ars. Goal to goal, have I said 60 seconds, or just normal football matches, yeah? You guys know grassroots is the heart, and a lot of these games is how players learn the basics and learn street football skills that they can apply. You look at Mares and, and things like that. You think they didn't learn them them skills and that balance playing on uneven surfaces and things like that. And we know as they get older, it gets coached out of the game. But I'm not here to speak about that. In fact, I am to a degree. Grassroots is the key. We know with the Premier League making mad money, FA making mad money, all these f um, federations making mad money. They haven't really got to care about grassroots. Hell, I mean, I know the way, the, the simple way to look at it, before Raheem Sterling, before Rashford, Lingard, insert any player, they're just the ones that come to my head. They played for grassroots clubs. Rashford was at Moss Side Rangers. Sterling, a team in North West London, grassroots, before they got picked up by professional clubs and started their journey from under eights, nines to now professional football. Nowadays, it's a bit booky because even if you look at Isaac Hayden, I'm pretty sure I read an interview, he didn't even play for a team, straight Arsenal. Um, straight Arsenal thing. That's happening to a lot of kids. A lot of kids that show the basics of being footballers at six, seven, eight. They're being put straight into an academy. So if you're not play, being put, put in, if you're being put straight into an academy, people, you don't need to play for grassroots clubs. So clubs are not scouting them things as much as they were back in the days. You'd have to go find players for clubs if you can go and get them. So with that being said, we know that big federations are not going to help these these grassroots clubs and schemes and the very heartbeat of football, the very ones with the coaches that work for 20 hours a week, I mean 20 pounds a week if they're lucky, and the coaches that do this coaching thing for free because their son plays for the team or they love it and they manage to sky up and leave work from 9 to 5, they manage to leave work a bit earlier, like 4.30, Get, get there for six to line up the session. They do the same thing the next day and the next day. They are what keeps the game going. And it's with, it upsets me that when I hear stories like this, before I get onto the story, I want to talk about FA Wembley, to be honest. Any of you that saw the news, FA Wembley, apparently, I don't know the ins and outs, but the FA, um, I mean, FC Wembley, Football Club Wembley, the FA wanted to um get them to change their name because they're using Wembley now. Apparently, they tried to say that's copyright. How is that copyright? Wembley is an area. This is the sort of things I'm talking about trying to strong arm little clubs that are pressed for finances that can't exactly do certain things that even in some extreme cases grassroots clubs are, are laundering criminals money because they've got no other choice because there's no funding for them like look at the millions of pounds these big corporations are doing they're not helping them so now on to the purpose of this thing bromley bromley fc non-league club a fairly decorated club fairly known club to say the least, no disrespect to them. But the reason they've made the headlines, they, they have a good chance of gaining promotion to the Football League. I mean, who wouldn't want that for the club, for the fans, for the players? There's a chance for some of you to go full-time or maybe even get picked up by bigger clubs. But there's a, there's, there's, a big, there's a big problem with that. If they get promoted, rather than go to the bigger league, they can actually go, they're actually going to get relegated twice down. That's counterproductive, right? Imagine getting promoted, going through a season, getting promoted to end up, only end up two divisions below, two divisions below where you, where you, when you should have actually been in the Football League. That's exactly the prospect. Now, why they face that is because they have a plastic pitch and FA rules, set state, football league clubs, you've got to have a grassroots club, I mean, grass pitch. Fair enough, that's all fine and dandy. That's fair enough, rules are rules. But are they helping them with finance? No. It costs a million pounds to play that plastic pitch. Again, I don't, I'm not a fan of plastic pitches, but you can see why they did it. Both to increase revenue. I mean, these are grassroots clubs and non-league clubs. They can't exactly have stadium tours and, and, and sell players for mad money and, and, and inflate ticket fees and all the things professional clubs can afford to do. So they had a grassroots, they had a plastic pitch, probably a five-a-side thing. No doubt, you rent that, teams can come um, train on it on weekdays, five-a-side, things like that. It costs a million pounds. But the investment, that's not a lot of money when you when you look at it from, from a club's perspective. And the investment was going to pay its dues. They had they faced the prospect of having to rip that up and play it by grass. But how can they afford that? There's no bursaries. There's no schemes to allow them to help to, to help them with that. There were grassroots. Cause there were not, I keep saying grassroots. They're a non-league club. It's not fair. And it just shows the strong arm in that really annoys me. This is, for me, I'm really scared of the grassroots level because, as you can see, they don't need it anymore. They really don't need it, these big clubs. Despite the fact it's the heartbeat and players, no doubt, will continuously coming through it, these big fat cats and corporations are milking them dry. And this is why I don't care when I see young 18-year-olds making 20 mil, I mean, 20, 20 grand a week. Is it immoral? Yes. But in the grand scheme of things, that 20k a week is peanuts compared to what the fat cats, shareholders and things of these organisations are making it. More added to that, 
that same player is the one that went through hardship seeing his players, it might even not be from a rich family, um, saw his friends get released from academies, had the joy at times, because this actually happens because I've spoken with people that have played for academies. The football joy is coached out of you because you have to play a certain way and get certain things correct. Put your body on the line. Short-term and long-term health problems because of the injuries and the, the amount of high-level sportsman things you're doing. I believe they, they deserve that money then. And again, it's, it's, it's peanuts compared to when you consider Arsenal the seventh richest club in the world. Is a little old, let's just say for argument's sake, Reese Nelson on 20 bags. Is that going to... What's wrong with that? To the seventh richest club in the world, a team that's still making profits and you look at Stan Kroenke making all this mad money. What's 20 bags? For a little kid from North London, I mean, from, from inner city London, that, that 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 probably wouldn't have that life, no no disrespect, because he probably is smart, but he wouldn't have that rich life if it wasn't for football, because we know how the dynamics are at play. He's now out of the rat race already. I love that. I love to see people get out of the rat race, man. These young players, they deserve it, because what would they be doing if they weren't professional footballers? They'd be facing the same hardship in society that some other people are facing, and these people are now, not even only them, gets their family out of it. Their old, their their, their, their mums and that in, in old age and are looked after. I really, really hate what's going on with this. And I believe it's only going to get worse, man. Clubs are closing at a, a, a ridiculous rate. Schemes are closing. A lot of schemes I've went to and went at Joy and stuff. Like, there used to be a man called Burke. He was like, now, sadly, I don't even think he's alive now. But them times there, was like 70, 80, 70, in his 70s, late 60s, 70s, maybe even his 80s. I don't know, man. I was a little kid and he had grey hair. I don't know. But him, he never got no money. Tottenham Community Centre. I used to play football there every every Saturday. Three pound. That three pound barely kept the lights on. He would run that. He'd make sh he'd make sure there was a scheme. Now we had an inside thing and an outside thing. I had to eventually go to the outside thing where eventually they they actually play matches straight away. I was actually angry about that having to go outside and play with the older kids because I liked playing with my friends. But they played matches straight away. Inside you did little training drills, little dribbling things and stuff, and then you played a match. It was it was live. It was live to a little you. That was live. Get up on a Saturday, you go there, then we go to the cage. Them little things are not there anymore. Now, we know kids are all on their iPads and these things there nowadays. But, yeah, man, does my head in. Guys, DG, I'm signing out, man. I'm waffling. This video wasn't meant to be this long, but I'm out.